Welcome to the second class of English Moving Forward. In the first class, we discussed how to conjugate verbs in the present tense. We also talked about my hometown of Hudson, New York. In this class, we will learn how to conjugate verbs in the past tense. We will also discuss the history of Hudson, New York. We will also visit an interesting museum in Hudson. In addition, we will have a conversation with a lady who saw what she thought was a frozen woman dead in a car and called police. The story made international headlines and became a social media phenomenon. Behind me is the Hudson River again. We are a little north of where we were at the beginning of class one. It is winter time, but it is unseasonably warm for January. The temperature is over 50 degrees Fahrenheit. The place I am standing now was originally inhabited by the Mohican Indians. In 1662, Dutch settlers purchased the land from the Mohicans. The Mohicans continued to live in the area and fought for the colonists during the Revolutionary War against England. After the Revolutionary War, the Mohicans began to migrate westward. In the 1820s and 1830s, they moved again, pressured to relocate to northeastern Wisconsin under the Federal Indian Removal Program, where they remain up to today. Their population is about 3,000. The city of Hudson, as we mentioned, is named after the English explorer, Henry Hudson. In 1609, Henry Hudson was chosen by merchants of the Dutch East India Company in the Netherlands to find an easterly passage to Asia. He was instructed to head east, north of Russia, but decided to head in the other direction west, hoping to find a route through North America. On September 3rd, 1609, he reached the estuary of the New River at present-day New York City in his ship, the Half Moon. He was not the first European to discover the estuary, as Giovanni da Verrazzano sailed there in 1524. On September 6th, 1609, one of Hudson's crew was killed by Indians with an arrow to his neck. Hudson then sailed into the upper bay on September 11th, and the following day began a journey up what is now known as the Hudson River. Over the next 10 days, his ship ascended the river, reaching a point about where present-day Albany is. We will visit that spot shortly. <laughs> Now we are in the town of Stuyvesant. Henry Hudson visited this region in 1609, then from here headed back down the river after 10 days. He eventually returned to England on November 7th of that year. This area, being next to the Hudson River, was settled before 1650. Hudson's voyage was used to establish Dutch claims to the region and to the fur trade that prospered here when a trading post was established at Albany in 1614. Albany is up the river. In 1610, Hudson set sail on his final voyage from England in his new ship called Discovery. On June 25th, the explorers reached what is now the Hudson Strait at the northern tip of Labrador, Canada. In November, however, the ship became trapped in the ice in the James Bay. When the ice cleared in the spring of 1611, Hudson planned to use his discovery to further explore Hudson Bay with the continuing goal of discovering the passage. However, 
most of the members of his crew ardently desired to return home. Matters came to a head and much of the crew mutinied in June. Legend has it that the crew members placed Hudson, his teenage son, and seven other crew who were loyal to Hudson on a small open boat and left them to fend for themselves where they probably were unable to survive the harsh conditions and die. In Henry Hudson's honor, there are many rivers, cities, municipalities, roads, bridges, and other landmarks named after him. Let's take a quick grammar break and talk about conjugating verbs in the past tense. With regular verbs, the past tense is formed by simply adding ed to the end of the verb. For example, to walk. I walked, you walked, he, she, it walked, we walked, and they walked. However, just like the present tense, there are many irregular verbs in the past tense, including the verb to be. I was, you were, he, she, it was, we were, and they were. For the first exercise in this section, please return to the video you just saw then find the verbs in the past tense and write them down. Next to the word, write down the infinitive. For example, from the sentence, in 1662, Dutch settlers purchased the land from the Mohicans, the past tense verb is purchased. Which comes from the infinitive, to purchase. You will find the answers on the link below. As you can see, there are many irregular verbs in the past tense in English. In the first class, we learned how to ask questions with do and does in the present tense. For example, do you like spinach? Or does he live near you? In the past tense, we use did for all persons. For example, did I, did you, did he, did she, did it, did we, and did they. Did Henry Hudson find an easterly passage to Asia? No, he didn't. Did the Mohican Indians fight for the colonists during the Revolutionary War? Yes, they did. In the video segment you just saw, we also used the future tense, which is easy to form by simply adding will to the infinitive. For example, the first time we used the future was in the sentence, in this class, we will learn how to conjugate verbs in the past tense. Will learn. We will discuss different ways to express the future later in this course. In the link below, you will also find vocabulary words and phrases from this section, along with written exercises for you to work on. Behind me is the Robert Jenkins House. It has a very interesting history. In the colonial period, before the American Revolution, the British controlled commerce in the colonies. However, the colonists voted to suspend trade with England in 1774. The whale industry was very big at this time, and England closed ports along the Atlantic coast. So, whalers had to look elsewhere to continue to survive. In 1783, two merchants from the whaling port of Nantucket 
an island off the coast of Massachusetts, Seth and Thomas Jenkins gathered $100,000 and sailed first to New York City and then up the Hudson River looking for property to establish a whaling center. They decided to settle in Hudson since it had bays deep enough for the whaling ships and land to support the people. Seth bought enough land for all the merchants, including the property behind me, which, is, which his son Robert used to build the house you see in 1811. Behind me is the house of Seth Jenkins. Seth Jenkins was the father of Robert. He was also the first mayor of Hudson and the founder of Hudson. In 1900, Mrs. Marcellus Hartley, the granddaughter of Robert Jenkins, formally transferred the Jenkins property to the Hendrick Hudson chapter of DAR, who maintains the property up to today. You can find further information on the Jenkins home at www.hudsondar.org. DAR is an acronym for Daughters of the American Revolution. It was founded in 1890 and is a women's organization dedicated to promoting patriotism, preserving American history, and securing America's future through better education for children. Members have to prove a lineal descent from a patriot of the American Revolution. Mrs. Marcellus Hartley was a descendant of a patriot of the American Revolution. Soon after the Jenkins brothers arrived from Nantucket, about 30 fellow merchants, later known as proprietors, followed them to Hudson. Hudson eventually became an important whaling town, a safe harbor from unwanted invasion. By 1790, the population exploded to 2,500, making Hudson one of the largest cities in New York State and 24th largest in the country. In 1820, it doubled in size to 5,000 people. However, by the mid-19th century, the whaling industry was finished in Hudson. But who would have thought Hudson, located over 100 miles from the ocean, would be an important whaling center? artists moved in, attracted to the beauty offered by the natural landscape. About two decades ago, Hudson experienced a new resurgence, attracting entrepreneurs who opened new restaurants, bars, and antique shops. Today, Hudson is a vibrant and diverse cultural center, small in size, but rich in history and charm. When I was in school studying languages, I always thought it was a good idea to write down words to reinforce what I just learned. I often wrote vocabulary words on index cards, so I think it's a good idea for you to do this too. To help you learn verbs in the past tense, please go over the section you just saw in the video and write down all the irregular verbs. I already highlighted these to help you. The answers are on the website. And now for some questions on the video section you just saw using interrogative words you learned in class number one. Who is Robert Jenkins? He is the son of Seth Jenkins and he was the third mayor of Hudson. Where is Nantucket Island located? It is located off the coast of Massachusetts. Why did Seth and Thomas Jenkins look to Hudson as a whaling center? Because Hudson offered deep bays and land to support the people. 
What does D-A-R stand for? It stands for Daughters of the American Revolution. When did the Whaling Era end? It ended in the middle of the 19th century due to alternative fuels appearing on the market, such as kerosene. How many proprietors followed the Jenkins brothers to Hudson? 30 proprietors, as they would later be known, followed the brothers to Hudson, though at the time, Hudson was called Clobrick Landing. In this next and final section, we will visit Cedar Park Cemetery in Hudson. This cemetery is where many of the original proprietors, including the Jenkins family, are buried. Next, we will visit the home of Colonel William Jenkins Worth. He is a descendant of the original proprietors of Hudson. He was born in Hudson and played a very important role in U.S. history. Finally, we will talk to the lady who thought she saw a dead person in a car and called police. This story made international headlines. In 1819, while Robert Jenkins was en route from New York City to Hudson, New York on a sloop, he was knocked off the sloop and died in the Hudson River. Behind me is his tombstone along with other tombstones of the Jenkins family, including his father. March 1st, 1794, General William Jenkins Worth, the future liberator of Texas in the Mexican-American War, was born in the house behind me. The Worth and Jenkins families were descendants of the original 30 proprietors who established Hudson, New York. Fort Worth, Texas was named after General Worth, along with Worth Avenue here in Hudson. I am here with a friend who saw a big event that happened in my hometown of Hudson a few weeks ago. What is your name? My name is Arione. People call me Lou. Where are you from? I'm from Brazil. How long have you lived in New York? 18 years. Good. Where were you on the day of the incident? I was going to work. What time was it? 7.30 a.m. In the morning. What did you see? And what did you think? I saw a lady in a car and I thought she was dead. So what did you do? I called the police. And what happened next? The police arrived. And what did the police do when they arrived? They looked into the car and they thought it was a dead lady in the car. They thought it was a dead lady? Yes. Did the owner of the car return? Yes, two hours later. What did the police do? They spoke to him mm -hmm. and he was very angry. Why was he angry? Because the police broke his car window. Were you there when this happened? Yes, I was. Do you think that you did the right thing? Yes, I did. Why? Because I thought it was a real person. Did you talk to any media after this event? No, I didn't. So this is your first interview? Yes, it is. Did you think this would be such a big story? No, I didn't but I know I did the right thing. Good, thank you for the interview. You're welcome. Okay, now for some questions on the final section. 
Where are the original proprietors buried? They are buried at Cedar Park Cemetery in Hudson. Next, how did Robert Jenkins die? He was knocked off a slope into the Hudson River. Knocked off in this context means something hit him and he was thrown into the Hudson River. A slope is a small sailboat with usually only one mast or pole. Who was General Worth? He was the liberator of Texas in the Mexican-American War. Texas belonged to Mexico before the war. Which city and street were named after General Worth? Fort Worth, Texas and Worth Avenue in Hudson. Okay, regarding the interview with Lou or Adione, where is Lou from? She is from Brazil. What was Lou doing the day of the incident? She was going to work. Why did Lou call the police? She called the police because she thought she saw a dead lady in a car. Why was the owner of the car angry? He was angry because the police broke his windshield. Finally, do you think Lou did the right thing? And why? I think she did the right thing because she thought there was a dead lady or a lady in a lot of trouble in the car. Okay, now for some vocabulary. Tombstone. A tombstone is an inscribed stone standing or laid over a grave, which you will find in a cemetery. Descendant. A descendant is a person who came from a particular ancestor. Your ancestors are your parents, your grandparents, and on up. Nickname. Lou is the nickname for Adione. In the first class, Slink is the, is the nickname for Paul. A lot of people use nicknames in the United States and other countries as well. I'm sure a lot of you have a nickname. Angry. Angry is when you have a very strong negative feeling and you are mad and upset at something. The owner of the car was very angry when he saw the police broke his windshield. In this class, we learned how to conjugate verbs in the past tense. We also learned how to use the word did to ask questions in the past tense. Finally, we discussed the history of Hudson, my hometown. Next class, we will visit New Orleans. New Orleans is a city in the south of the United States. We will also visit many other cities in different classes from now on. In the next class, we will learn another tense in the present, called present progressive or present continuous. This tense can also be used to express the future. I will also place a link on the website for anyone interested in knowing what happened to the frozen lady in the car. Finally, if you are interested in knowing more about the indigenous history of the Hudson Valley, there is a book written by James Fenimore Cooper called Last of the Mohicans you might want to read. There is also a movie based on the book Last of the Mohicans. So we will see you in exciting New Orleans in the next class. Take care. Mm -hmm.